before we uh, before everybody got here and we were kind of get, gathering in and bringing the food in and stuff like that, we were a couple of us guys were standing in the back, kind of talking about some things that God. I'm grateful that God has delivered us from. All right. Delivered me of drugs and alcohol and cigarettes. You know, we were, I was kind of joking around. You know, I worked at my dad's gas station. The day I turned 16, he called me and said, I don't even think he said happy birthday. He said, said hey, time you're 16 now. You start to get to work. Get to the gas station as soon as you can. And I started, uh, he had a, he was trying to change his uh, garage into a convenience store with the gas station. You know, we had the, we actually had full service pumps back then still too. So I had to, he was like, here's the change change thing for your, I was like, I ain't wearing that change thing. <laughs> I'll put some change in my pocket so I could have the change if needed because I had to work the full serve and then people from self-serve would come anyway. But I would just thank the Lord because like I said, we were cutting, like I said, we were joking around about some things that God delivered. I tried all the cigarettes there were. I tried every brand. I tried every kind of chew. I tried every kind of tobacco and the liquor. It didn't matter what it was. I tried it all. It was at the gas station. I had it readily at my disposal. But thank God, 25 years ago, right. probably this month or last month, where I stood in his living room with a faith. Yes. And like he's saying, that's all it takes. Right. I didn't lift my hands. I didn't, I didn't, I wasn't shouting. I wasn't there yet. Right. But I came with the mustard seed size of faith. Right. To where, Lord, because it was the weekend, I just tried to commit suicide for the second time. And I said, Lord, there's got to be something better than this. All right. I want a life that's better than this. And God stepped on the scene and, and delivered me right then and there from the addictions. Yes. 25 years later, and I still have faith that God is a yes. miracle working God. Oh, a God that can raise the dead. A God that can take the cancer from the body and cast it into the pit of hell where it belongs. Right, amen. Because he is the one true God that his name is above every other name. Right, amen. And everything amen. is under his feet. And those amen. feet are on the church. Those amen. feet are on the body of Christ right amen. now. Yes. Those feet are on those that have faith to believe that he can still tear down walls of Jericho. Yes. That he can still part a Red Sea. Right. If, I'm, if, I'm, if, I'm, if it's decided by him. That I'm supposed to walk on that dry ground. That he's going to part that red sea for All me. Right, right, right. Amen. So I just want to thank him for yes, that. Amen. For the power that he has to deliver us. The power that he has to change the hearts and minds oh, of yes, men, yes, women, yes, and children. Yes, yes, yes. People are not so far gone that God can't. His arm is not too short that he can't reach them where they are. That's right. Oh, yeah. I'd be one of those Amen. Right. back then. Anybody else in this place that God has pulled you yes. from the miry clay, right. that He has pulled you out from that miry clay, right. and He has set your feet on solid ground? Praise God! Praise yeah. God! I want to. So I just, I just thank Him for that. Yes, Amen. He's all powerful. Yes, right. Amen. It doesn't matter what's going on around us. No, sir. It doesn't matter what's going on in our hearts and our minds. It doesn't matter what's going on in our marriages. It doesn't matter what's going on in our places of work. Kids been back to school lately. It does not matter because God is in yes. control. Yes. He is still the yes. same God that sits upon yes. the throne. His word that says, I have not changed yesterday. I'm not going to change today. And I'm not changing forever. Word. Yes. Word. Yes. Amen. Praise God. He is faithful, Praise God. and he is on time. Yes, sir. It's not always my time, though, right? right. Yeah. It's not all. He doesn't always answer prayers the way I want him to answer. Right. right. Because we all know, right? I know. I got a good idea for this plan, right? I got a good idea how the turnout should be on this. Right. We, we think. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's our problem. Yeah. We think. Ah. We think. Uh -huh. Well, I think, Lord, and he's like, well, that's where you started out your prayer the wrong way already. Because you came to me with, I think. Uh, yeah. right. <laughs> we got a list like, here, handle this. This way. Right? Yeah, come on. And he ain't Burger King. It ain't having your way with the Lord. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's right. But if I could just share something, you don't have to, you can just stay seated where you're at. I'm going to read John 16 and 33 in the Amplified. And it says, I have told you, and this is Jesus speaking. 
I have told you these things so that in me you may have perfect peace. Yes. In the world you have tribulation and distress and suffering. But mm -hmm. be courageous, be confident, be undaunted, be filled with joy. I have overcome the world. Yes. Yeah. So like I said, that was the Amplified and it had a few extra things in there talking about that perfect peace. Yes. If you've never experienced God's perfect peace, I want to tell you, it's a peace that you're not going to be able to understand it. True. Right, right, right. You're going to see the flames around you. You're going to feel the storm around you. But when God's perfect peace sweeps in, then you're going to be like, whoa, this is what perfect peace is now. Yeah, yeah. Because I could still stand in the fire. I could yeah. still stand in the middle of the storm. But when God's perfect peace steps on the scene, All right. I just know that I can lean on him. That I, know, I just know that I can trust in him that it, it doesn't matter what's swirling around me. It doesn't matter how hot it gets around me. The children, Meshach, Shadnack, and Abednego, when they got caught, cast into the fiery furnace, yes. the peace, the prince of peace was with their in their midst, right? right? And they came out of that fire, not a hair on their body was singed. They came out of the fire, they didn't even smell like smoke. They didn't even smell like and that's what the perfect peace of God does to right. us. We, we, we know that we were in the fire. There might be people that we come in contact after that fiery furnace. They're not going to know what kind of fiery furnace we've been in. Yeah. But we can share yes. about the perfect peace of God that we had when we were in that furnace. Yes. They might not understand that fiery furnace, but yeah. we could we could share that peace with them. Right. We could yeah. bring that perfect peace of God. We could proclaim that perfect peace of God into their lives. And when we speak it in faith. Right. Yeah. I can have faith that when I speak peace into your life that God's peace will come in because yeah. I know that he is the prince of, of peace, peace. Right. and he doesn't want to keep his peace he doesn't want to withhold it from us right. yeah. because I have, he says I have overcome the world Yes. Yeah. and you know what's so awesome about the Lord what's so awesome about Jesus when he was walking back then but where he walks in our hearts he walks in our midst now to where yes. he gives us the answer before the test alright I never knew a teacher that ever did that. It's good. They would give you the definitions. Oh my goodness, I hated copying all the definitions back. Kids today have no clue. <laughs> That's the truth. They have no clue of what school was like back in the day when you had to go to the library and get a, and sign a book out or just stay there because you didn't want to carry 12 encyclopedias to the house. You just went to the library and went through the catalog, card catalog, and tried to find the right book, right? Yeah. Yeah. Some of y'all are like, what, is, what are you even talking about? <laughs> I get on my phone and there's encyclopedias at my hand. We didn't have that. Anyway, Jesus, he gives us the answer before the test. Jesus tells us that in him we, we may have that perfect peace. That peace which exceeds anything that we can understand. That peace that Christ brought is primarily spiritual peace from, with, from and with God. Yes. Peace in the heart. Peace as the disposition or spirit. Yes. We can't have a spirit of peace. Yes. Right. Our disposition, which is a person's inherent qualities of mind and character. And I can, I can attain those characters, the character and the nature of Christ, mm -hmm. when I spend that time with him to where now I have the disposition, I have that, that character, and I have that nature of Christ because I spend so much time with him. Yes, that's good. Did you ever have a friend growing up that you spent so much time with that, that their parents and your parents were saying, now you just sound just like, what's his name? No. Or, or what's her name? You know, you ever had that? A friend like that back right. in the day? I had a friend like that. It, it was one of our houses that we were always at. Right. Spending the night and you know eating dinner and it was just like he was part of the family growing up, right? Right. To where we become. Then you get married and then they talk about how oh you sound like your wife or you sound like your husband or you're doing things, you know, right? We do those yeah, things yeah. happen in life. Uh -huh. So if I spend that time from waking up till the time I go to bed, if I spend that time with him, I now I obtain, I, I reach, and, and I now have those inherent qualities of Jesus Christ yeah. to where I have his That's peace. Good, it is a part of me now. I don't have to. Just, I don't even have to call out His name anymore. I know that I, I have Him with it, within me. Yes. I have His Spirit that lives and dwells with me. So then I can now have the that that Spirit of peace that dwells within me. No matter. Right. And then where I go, Lord, where I'm, I'm going to my place of work today. 
I'm going to the school today. I'm going to whatever I'm going today, Lord, that your peace would even go before me. That when I get there, that your peace is already there. And that when I leave that place today, Father, that my that your peace is going to reside in that place. All right. yeah. Yes. Because his peace can make changes yes, in amen. people's lives. Amen. In this world, we have tribulation and distress and suffering. Yes. Oh, I thought there was going to be like, oh, hallelujah. I thought there was going to be an old apostolic <laughs> Holy Ghost jig on that. Mm. Um, <laughs> because we have tribulation. Yes, we do. We have distress. We are overcome with problems. Anybody? We're overcome with difficulties, misfortunes, concerns, worries, and anxieties. Right? We worry about things. Yes. We worry about paying the bill. We worry about paying the twelve hundred dollar light bill. We worry about sending the kids back to school. It's a fresh year. What things might happen this year at school? All right, come on. These things are on our minds. We we are bur burdened and afflicted. We are in agony, anguish, and pain. We are overwhelmed. Come on. Anybody All ever right. been so overwhelmed you didn't feel like getting out of bed? Right. You've been so oh, yeah. over. I know I'm not the only one. Oh, yes. You've been so overwhelmed. You didn't want to get out of bed. There's something going on at work. There's something going on as soon as I walk out of this bedroom. Something's going to take place when I walk out of this house. We're so overburdened. We're so overwhelmed. Yeah, we're, our schedules are packed. We're, we got anxieties. We got worries. Yeah. Look at the world going on around us. We got things that are taking place. And we're like, we are talking about the normal is not normal anymore. Right. Well, Those things growing up weren't, it's not normal that I dealt with it as, a, as a kid. That the kids today aren't dealing with those things. All right. All right. They're dealing with other things. Right. Our children have anxiety. Yes. Right. Our children are overburdened. They're overwhelmed. It feels like the weight of the world is on our shoulders and right. it's just crushing us. It's pulverizing us. All right. Yeah. Come on. Jesus says, though, that he has overcome the world. Yes, he did. These things are in the world. Right. Yeah. But you know what? In this world, oh, not of it. Yeah. In this yeah. world, but not of it. I do not have to become a victim to anxiety. I don't have to become a victim to be over, overwhelmed Come and on. overburdened and full of, 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 of the misfortunes and the dif difficulties and the problems. Right. Because Jesus says that he has overcome the world. Right. And we, you and I, overcome these things in him. Because what do we do when we're laying in the bed and we don't feel like walking out? What are we doing? We're trying to figure things out, aren't we? Yes. Yeah. We're trying to figure things out. Come on, it's the truth. We're trying to come up with a plan. Yeah. Yep, come on. We do. Yes, amen. We are trying to figure the things out under the blanket. Under our nice and comfy blankies. Yeah. Under their crying and weeping and worried and, and distressed. Come on. Thinking my comfort is coming from laying in that bed underneath that blanket, right? Come on. It is a comforter. Yeah. Well, actually, mine's not. Mine is a, uh, one of them hand thing with the tie, tie blank, blanket. It's a Steelers blanket. It's a blanket. I have a blanket. <laughs> I got a blanket. And it's a Steeler, Pittsburgh Steelers blankie. Oh. <laughs> and so I am comforted <laughs> in Sixburg. All those rings. No, anyway. <laughs> that's how we we seek our comfort. Yeah. Under that, we think. Remember being a kid? You what? I didn't like scary movies. I still don't like scary movies. But nah, as a kid, what did you do? You'd hide under it. Oh yeah. You'd hide under. We think we're protected. Come on. From from the things we think we're protected yeah. when we're I don't want to go out into the world today I don't want to deal with these things I don't want to deal with this, with this stress today I'm overcome I'm overwhelmed here let me just hide in my bed let me hide in under my blanket All right. my safety my what they call it as a a security blanket yeah. there is no security there is no comfort in that blanket Come on. we overcome these things in Him yes. But I'm buried under these things. Right. I'm overburdened. Have you ever said I'm swamped? Yeah. I got too much going on. Help us, Lord. I don't even know how I'm gonna supposed to, how am I supposed to get through this day. I don't know how I'm supposed to get through this week. And then that day, and then that week, and then it turns into a month. And we next thing you know, we piled up a few months. Next thing you know, we piled up 
a quarter, you know, half a half a year and then a year. And where where this year go by? I just felt like I've been so overburdened, over overwhelmed. But you know what it is? It's in Him. Right. It's in His name. Yes, it is. Yeah. Just like at baptism, if you've been baptized in this house in the name of Jesus, yes, we we pastor who it was or another minister, whatever it was, that they put us down under in the water, put All us right. backwards in that water, and they said, you know, for the remission of your sins, yes. I baptize you in the name of Jesus. Yes, and when we come out, just like he showed us that man that was delivered. Healed miraculously. Right, right. Miraculously healed. You know why it's a miracle? Because we can't explain it. Right. That's because true. it's only, that's only something that God can do. All right. Yeah. Yes, amen. So just like at baptism, we have to bury the old sinful nature. That old man has to be buried. It has to be overwhelmed. Yes. It has to be submerged. It has to be under, under the weight. Yes. You know, we're under the weight of the things of this world. We're under the weight of, of the anxieties and the stress. But we, to get rid of that old sinful nature, I have to be buried to get rid of that old sinful nature. Right. Yeah. Submerged in that yes. water because a little sprinkling ain't going to do it. I need to be completely overwhelmed. Yeah. Yeah. That old sinful nature has to be overwhelmed. It has to be buried. It has to be put down. It has to be submitted. Yes. In that water, taken down into that watery grave. Yes. I don't get buried into it unless I'm going down in. All right, come on, yes. And I'm not preaching about baptism today, but this is where I felt like it was going. Yes, stay on. But we have the tribulation, we have the distress, we have the suffering. We can or have become crippled or paralyzed under these weights. Yes. Whether we want to admit it or not. All right. Right? Because we were all just in agreement that we don't want to get out of bed. We can't. Right. Come on. Right? Yes. I remember those days before I got delivered from drugs and alcohol. I smoked weed every day like it was oh, oxygen. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I smoked weed every day to where it got me to a place to where I did not want to go out of the house because I was so paranoid. But I had to be high, though. But I was so paranoid that I didn't want to go out of the house. Right. I didn't want to be around other people except for those people that were in my apartment getting high with me. Uh, yeah. You want to talk about being a cripple? Do you want to talk about being a paralytic? That's what the enemy wants to do to us. All right. with, yeah. Whenever we start, uh, when he sees us buried underneath those anxieties and underneath all the stress and we become overwhelmed and we're say, we're speaking those things out too. All yeah. right, come on. We're just proclaiming it even more. We're just taking, we're just rooting for the enemy when we do that. Yes. Yeah. I'm so overburdened. I'm so overwhelmed. I'm, right. I'm so stressed out. Yes. I can't take it anymore. I'm swamped. I just don't know what to do anymore. I can't make it. I'm, I don't know how I'm going to get through this. Instead, we should say, you know what? Oh, come on. You come at me, enemy, with shield and spear and sword and all that kind of stuff. You come at me with your fiery darts, but I come at you, stress and anxiety and worry and doubt and unbelief. Hallelujah. I come at you being the feeling of overwhelm and overburdened and feeling right. paralytic yeah. and feeling crippled. I'm not crippled in the name of Jesus. Rise up and walk. Glory, praise God. So just as Peter, when they were coming to the gate, beautiful. And they saw the lame man, which was laid out there every day yes. by his family. Here, we're just going to go throw you out the gate. Go and beg. Probably, what you know, you think he was just begging for himself. I think family members was even trying to ride off of that. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah. Right. So. But they would throw this lame man out at that gate, beautiful, out at the temple every day so that he could beg. Beg for food, beg for money, whatever it was. Mm -hmm. Whatever you have. And Peter and, and, and uh, I believe it was John, when they walked up and they seen this lame man laying there, and here's what he said. He said, silver and gold I do not have. How many of us carry silver and gold with us where we go? 
I, got, I think I got two dollars in my wallet right now. I know my debit card's in there too, but I might, <laughs> uh, my wife said she took one of them, so I got a dollar. No, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Peter, yeah. Now she's always like, you should keep some money in your wallet. I'm like, well, I'm gonna spend it on dumb things like candy, <laughs> but I don't need or chips or something. Peter said, "Silver and gold I do not have, but what I do have, come on, I yeah. give to you. Yes. In the name, once again, I'm talk, I'm reading from the Amplified. So it says, in the name, the authority." And the power of Jesus Christ. Yes. Begin now. Begin now to walk and go on walking. Yes. Yeah. Wow. Begin now. Don't worry about yesterday. Don't worry about five minutes from when they just your family laid you here. And they laid you with maybe some of their guilt. And maybe some of their shame that they heaped on. Mm -hmm. Just like the things of this world wants to heap on. Yes. Heap on top of the things that we're already dealing with our own guilt and our own shame. And we, we got the weight of this world just being heaped on us, right? And, and, and he said, I don't have silver and gold. All right. But what I do have. Right. And Peter preached also that day. Because after they after this lame man got rot, rose up and he walked. Yeah, come on. That there was a, a crowd. There's people going to notice. Yes. People are taking, people are watching. Uh -huh. And we don't think they're watching, right? So these people gathered in amazement at the lame man walking. I would, I'm amazed seeing that guy delivered, you know, blind and then gets healed. Yeah. Yeah. So Peter, he preached how they disowned to the, here's what he's talking to the crowd. He preached how they disowned and denied the Holy One, yeah. the righteous one, yeah. and asked for the pardon of a murderer to be granted instead. Uh -huh. Right. And he preached on how they killed the prince, the author, the originator, the source of life. Yes. And here's what Peter said in Acts 3 and 17, and this is once again, like I said, it's from the Amplified. He said, Now, brothers, I know that you acted in ignorance, not fully aware of what you were doing. Just as your rulers did also. And so God has fulfilled what he foretold by the mouth of all the prophets. That his Christ, the Messiah, the anointed, would suffer. So repent. Change your inner self. Your old way of thinking. And return to God. Seek his purpose for your life. So that your sins may be wiped away. Blotted out. Completely erased. Completely How awesome erased. is that? Yes. So that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord, restoring you like a cool wind on a hot day. <laughs> a cool wind in South Texas would be pretty nice right now, wouldn't it? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but so like the Lord, when, he, when Jesus spoke at the beginning here, what I read, where he says, I have told you these things so that in me you may have perfect peace. In the world you have tribulation and distress and suffering. But be courageous, be confident, be undaunted, be filled with joy. I have overcome the world. And so that's where I was kind of, kind of hitting on baptism a little bit. Talking about how we, that old sinful nature has to be completely submerged. It has right. to be completely overwhelmed. It has to be overcome right. by water completely. Yes. So that our sins are washed away. Yes. Our sins are just completely wiped away. Just like when they saw this paralytic man, this crippled man, you and I at times, right? Yeah. We're no different. Come on. When we're saying I'm laying in the bed underneath my security blanket, I can't go out and face the things of this world. Right. I can't go out and face, even though that stress is still with me underneath that blanket. Yeah. That anxiety is what's putting me under that blanket, and so it's here with me. All right, come on. Just like this paralytic, this crippled, this lame man, yeah, come on. we're no different. So today I tell you, silver and gold, I don't have for you today. Right, come on. But what I do have for you, because of the power and the authority 
that is in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Rise up today, right, right here, right now. Yeah. Rise up today and continue walking. Yeah. We can get up out of the bed each day yeah. because we are in Him and He is in us. His word says, abide in me, and I will abide in you. All I have to do is step out in faith and declare it in the name of Jesus. When I, when I choose, when instead of piling up underneath those blankets and being buried under that anxiety and that stress, I say, hey, you know what, in the name of Jesus, instead of being piled up underneath this security blanket, yeah. I choose to bleed the blood right yeah. now. Yeah. That I would be covered by the blood of Christ right now in the name of Jesus. Oh, brother, you just don't understand. I've, I've got so much depression that I'm battled with. It's the same thing. Battled it most of my life. I, you know, battled it most of my life. Depression can be overcome as well. Yes. Yeah. Depression can be defeated. In the name of Jesus. Name All of it takes Jesus. is a little bit of faith. Yes, All it takes is just a little bit of asking. Heavenly Father. Would you take this garment. Yes. Would you take this heaviness. This garment of heaviness from me right now. Yes. In the name of Jesus. Yes. Father let me be clothed. With a garment of praise. That I would continue to praise you in this storm right now Father. That I would continue to magnify your name. Because I, if I lift him up. <laughs> mm -hmm. When I lift him up, doesn't he lift me up? Yes, he does. I don't know about you, but that's what happens in my prayer life. When I lift him up, he lifts me up. So I do not want to be the one that keeps you from that table. Yes. But you know who else has a table set before us? Yes, amen. That's good. The Lord has a table set before us yes, every day. Amen. Every day that I wake up. And you know what? That table is always set right by the bed, too, where I choose to be under my security blanket. And he's like, I got this table spread for you each day. Yes, amen. All you have to do is sup with me, and I'll sup with you. Yes, what he said. So this part, I know we kind of had a little bit of a prayer earlier. But if it's okay with you, if you do you mind standing with me? And if you could, if we could just close our eyes and just take a few moments. If we could, just like this last Father, part, just like this last part of Acts in 3.17, I think some of us need this right now. So that the times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. Restoring you right now in the name of Jesus. Because the presence of the Lord is in this house right now. If you would just lift up your, your, your eyes unto the Lord. If you would lift up your voice unto the Lord. If you want to lift your hands right now in the name of Jesus, and if we can just surrender all right now and allow those times of refreshing to come in the name of Jesus, let that Spirit of the Holy Ghost speak and pray through you right now in Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, I receive everything that you have for us right now, Lord. I receive that time of refreshing, Lord. I receive that renewal. Father, in the name of Jesus, Peter for your will shun them, Yala, but not of the Yoko, Peter for your will shun them, will shun them, Yala, Peter for your will shun them, will shun them, Yala, I receive the renewing of today, Lord. I receive the refreshing of today, Father, in the name of Jesus, glory to God, hallelujah, receive that perfect peace, Lord, I receive that perfect peace. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Amen. I'm going to give you some. Some verses six and seven. There, there, there's three of these. They're all verses six and seven. It's Isaiah nine, six and seven. When you get home, read that one. Philippians four, six and seven. If you need help remembering it, ask me later and I'll give you the I'll give you all three. And then first Peter five, six and seven. The only one I want to share with you is what Isaiah nine and seven says. The first line, that one famous line that verses we you we read. Um Talking about the Christ when he said, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. 
And what that next line says, and of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. You ever thought about that? Thank you. How much government does, does he have in our lives? If he's governing our lives, then we certainly have his peace. Yeah. Something I've been praying. I want him to have more government in my life. Come on, this is not Uncle Sam we're talking about. This is the Lord Jesus. He can truly govern our lives better than anybody else can. Amen? Amen. So, um, so sit down one more time. Sister Smith, come join your husband. We are going to do something also very spiritual today as we honor Bishop and Sister Smith. Their, their service to the kingdom of God, their service to, um, to many people across the kingdom. And not only um, here, but it's going to be, now it's going to be around the world here in just a few more months. So we want to honor their service to God and um, the kingdom and to us. Um, 2005, September, that was the first Sunday in September in 2005. Last Sunday oh, the last Sunday in August. So, well, I'm going by the combination on the door. That's what sticks in my head. That's how I remember. That's how I remember. So, they, um, they came here and tried out for the church. And we, we had gone through a series of pastors coming or men coming to try out to, to see if uh, it was a good fit for their ministry here. And um, actually, the Smiths were the last one. And I remember some of the things that we had a, a Saturday night. We had a dinner here at the church and we served food. And matter of fact, I made the same food today that we made that night. My beans and greens. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, right. <laughs> but I remember the questions, people asking questions about different things. And, and um, Bishop came here with a totally different mindset that, than any of the previous pastors and then any of the, and the three that came to try out. And the church elected Bishop and Sister Smith, at, or there was Pastor and Sister Smith at the time as our senior leader. And over the last 18 years, I don't know, I can't speak for you as much as I can myself and my family, but there are things that I have learned in the last 18 years that I never knew. Things that I was never exposed to. Things I had been told needed to happen in my life, but I didn't know how to make it happen. And so I thank God for what God has dealt, what God has shown us through this man's ministry and his leadership. And then um, as they have, as it became a team. Uh, matter of fact, I believe they had a picture. He had a picture in his office, and it just said, "Just give him a mic." There's Bishop with a mic. There's Sister Smith with a mic, and then there's Justin with a microphone. Just give him a mic. And, um, and so uh, we thank God for the last 18 years. And um, I won't share all the questions, Sister Smith, that my dad asked you that day. Um, it, it was kind of comical. Um, if you knew my father, you know, he was, he always, you never knew what was going to come out of his mouth. But today we want to honor not only their pastoral anniversary, but we're going to honor their, um, their wedding anniversary as well because they will be... Um, busy in September when their anniversary comes up. Matter of fact, I believe uh, if it's not the prayer conference, it's vacation. And so we're going to take this opportunity today and wish them a happy anniversary as well. So Bishop, Sister Smith, if you don't mind, come. Uh, we're still live on Facebook, so don't say anything you don't want anybody to hear. <laughs> that was directed to me. Uh, so so y'all come over here. So uh, uh, there may be Sister Diane may be on or Pastor Ray may be on, so we want everybody to be able to see y'all. So uh, I, I don't know which is which, but I'm just going to give them to you both. But Bishop Sister Smith from the Rock Church, we wish you a very happy pastoral anniversary and then your wedding anniversary in a few weeks. We love you dearly. We thank God for you. We thank God for the, what we've been exposed to. I didn't know what, I didn't know what 
being apostolic really meant. I don't know if we truly understand it all, but I had no clue. I didn't even have a clue what it meant to be apostolic. But today, I believe the Rock Church has come light years from where we were 18 years ago. Can I get a witness, somebody? Hello, somebody? Like Sister Diane said. So today, happy anniversary. I'll stop talking and you guys can say whatever's on your heart. and every one of you um, for being faithful not to us but to him and um, picking up the burden of I believe the will of God you know a lot of people they think religion is a or I guess religion is a just a act of saying that you love God but doing nothing about it. Right. But having a relationship you actually change. There it is. And when you have, when you come in, a lot of people come in for the religion. Yeah. But I try all my life to get you past religion to a relationship. Amen. Because a relationship you actually fall in love with a relationship. Yes, you do. An organization comes and goes. But a love affair never, never goes. It might go. It might, you know, if it's natural, and one of us dies or whatever, we'll probably end up marrying again. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> she'll never forgive me, though. <laughs> and um, we'll never forget the, the relationship that we have with God. That's why most of you, some of you, have come home, and some of you, if you ever walk away from this. This will always haunt you because we're not a religion. Yes. It's a relationship. Yeah. And we truly have a relationship with him. You can never separate yourself from him. Amen. 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 Thank you. I don't do it enough. I know I'm, I don't say it enough, but I really do appreciate this church. Um, the last 18 years of your support, your love, and allowing me to minister to you according to God's will, not to mine. I've made a lot of mistakes in 18 years. To be honest, you have to. But we, we serve one that does not make a mistake. Amen. And none of us are here by mistake. Amen. 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 I'm going to read the card while you I just want to say thank you. Um, you know, I was sitting there, we were just talking about growing. Uh, I've grown a lot in the last 18 years, and I'm really thankful for that. The biggest thing I can say is we didn't just get a church. We got a family. Yes, I do. Always, these moments always hard because you don't want to cry. Um, we got a family. And um, I remember right before, we didn't know it was going to be this church. Matter of fact, we was thinking we had, We'd gone and tried somewhere, and that was. We didn't want to come back to Texas. Yeah, yeah. In a, not because. No, this. Know. Yeah. It's just for, for, didn't yeah. really care about the heat. No. <laughs> right. <laughs> <It's> just, <laughs> as we're melting right now. Doesn't mean that. But I remember my mom had called. The Holy Ghost had hit her, and she had called. We were, we were, uh, at one place preaching. You know, entertaining that thought. This was way before we knew about y'all, and and um, uh, she said, she said the church that you're going to is is going to need a lot of healing because they've been hurt. And then the word was spoken to us that God was going to heal us as well. And so I just want to say that that was this church Amen. when we came here. Y'all just embrace this and love this as if you've known us forever. 
and uh, God gave confirmation of all of that too, which was so beautiful. And through the years, I've watched as God's healed you, and hopefully you've watched how God's healed us. And so just thank you for being in our family and loving us, and Amen. God bless you. So, and um, oh, we're still having care group. Yeah. So it's the College Park Care Group at 5:45 at the Smiths. Um, and one last thing, a little bit of instruction here, and then we're going to pray over the food. We want to welcome all of our guests today. Those of you who join with us online, and those watching by Facebook now, and then those that are. Here in the room, welcome to all of our guests. There are people here I've never met you before, and I hope I get a chance to before we leave today. But with that being said, I want all our guests to, to go first in the line. Our, um, Bishop Sister Smith lead it off, obviously, and then our guests follow quickly behind them. And then uh, we'll start with the seniors. You know who you are. You'll follow the line behind those. And there's not a lot of room for the line back there, but just um, just... Keep that in mind as we get up and go get in line. But our guests, Bishop, Sister Smith, our guests, and then our seniors and everybody else behind them. Yes, ma'am. Oh, um, the senior Silver Wings Bible study lunch is Friday, this coming Friday at noon at Sister Anna Bergfeld's house. If you haven't been to one of those and you're in the Silver Wings, um, get with her about the details. But uh, there's always lunch. Uh, there's two times a month, so this is the first one for the month of September. Is this coming Friday at noon? Silver Wings, that's 55 and above. So if you're 55 and above, you want to join with us. Amen. So let me pray over the food, and then we'll get started. Heavenly Father, thank you for food, for fellowship. Thank you, O oh Lord, for the word that was spoken. And now we pray your blessings on it all in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you all. <laughs>